I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited about today's Bible study, um, as I always am. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on the firmament and the veil. Um, we're going to um, look at some of the things that um, we're going to look at some of the things that we've previously talked about as well. We're going to summarize it and then we're going to get into some new things. But first, I want to read this scripture. Psalm 91 says to the chief musician, the Psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of, of God, of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So I'm bringing up this scripture because uh, one of the new new subscribers, let me see if I've got new subscribers on YouTube, um, left this comment uh, about Werner, Werner von Braun. He was one of, uh, as he says, one of the original NASA scientists. And um, he was actually w one of the directors with NASA when one of the, f when uh, the first man, man went to the moon, supposedly went to the moon, which, which we're coming to realize that's probably not true. But he was the one that was uh, one of the ones in charge uh, but what's interesting is on his tombstone, he has Psalm 19.1, which we just read. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show up his handiwork. So I, I was doing a little bit of research about him. Uh, first, first, I'll just show this. Uh, this is from NASA's website because he was working uh, on the on uh, some of the first space missions uh, to the moon. It says Dr. Werner von Braun was one of the most important rocket developers and champions of space exploration in the 20th century. So um, the reason I the reason I want to bring this up is because this is really epitomizes what we've been talking about. When we look at the sky, when we look at the stars, it's showing Yah's glory. It's showing how awesome he is, how powerful he is. It's showing that everything is highly organized and complex. We have this timepiece that that is exact. The stars have their own rotation. The sun and the moon have their own cycles. And it's just an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing that the Most High has made for us, yet there's so many people that choose not to acknowledge acknowledge it. But even the guy that worked for NASA was one of the directors. NASA, remember, means to deceive and to lift up. Even he put on his tombstone, Psalm 19.1. It's, it's my opinion that he um, wanted to reveal the truth because the scientists, they don't talk about the firmament. They don't talk about the firmament. According to them, there, there is no firmament. But he wanted to make sure that that was on his tombstone before he died. So I just think that's really interesting. Um, now, before we get into our lesson, I also wanted to show a video. Um, We, um, give me one second, I need to change my settings so we can, uh, so you can hear the video. So I was talking with, um, I was talking with someone and they were letting me know that they had never heard about this before. So... There's multiple people. So I thought it was common knowledge, but obviously it's not common knowledge. 
So I want you to see this. Did, Caleb, did you have something you want to say? You didn't hear nothing I said. Did y'all were just saying that Warner Von Braun? He used to be a Nazi. He is fascinated. It took a, yes. uh, a foreigner to yep. tell us all of that. You know about our own uh, space government program. Yeah, yeah. He was brought. He was one of the ones that was brought over because of their knowledge in uh, science and us. Uh, uh, oh, hold on, Caleb. Let, let, I'm finished. Let, I'm finished. Go ahead. Right, we'll get back to it. Yeah. Okay, so what you're hearing are sounds that have been heard all around the world. This is a, this one's a little bit older, a few years old, um, but these sounds have been heard in a whole bunch of different nations. Different kinds of sounds. Sometimes it sounds like a, a shofar type of sound. Sometimes it sounds like just really spooky stuff, you know. Um, but I want to I want to show one more video. This this was it's it's even it was talked about in the news uh, for a while as well. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show that video too. So, um, oops, wrong video, wrong video. Yeah, wrong video. One second. Okay. Guys, what is going on? Strange sounds are being heard around the world. In Sweden, this sure sounds like a trumpet. In Michigan, another trumpet-like sound. In British Columbia, Canada, Dr. Glenn McPherson says he heard a strange humming sound in his home. At first, he thought it was an appliance. Ultimately, I cut the power to the entire house, and the sound got louder. Then he discovered he was not alone. This is, in fact, a worldwide phenomenon, and I'm calling it the worldwide hum. Check out his hum map data project. 
To date, some 17,000 civilians and scientists from around the world who call themselves Hummers have reached out to him, saying they heard the same thing. McPherson thinks the mysterious hum could be caused by low-frequency sound waves that sound like this. He actually built this three-foot-by-six-foot steel box that blocks out low-frequency sound waves. But for some reason, even inside it, he says he still hears the strange hum. Going into the box made absolutely no difference whatsoever to my perception of the hum. If anything, maybe even it got louder. Inside Edition producer Brianna Deutsch climbed inside the coffin-like box to test it out. She hears no hum. It's pretty dark. <laughs> Now listen to these strange booms that sound almost from another planet. It could be a sonic boom from a fighter jet breaking the sound barrier. Another possibility, a meteor. This home security camera in Bridgewater, New Jersey, actually caught the flash and then the sound of a meteor. Huge explosion, loud enough and strong enough to knock the pictures off my walls and shatter the glass all over the place. That may help explain some of the booms, but others remain a weird mystery. Okay, so I wanted to show that because, um, it, I, because of some of the comments I got. Uh, for when I was talking to different people that said they had never heard of that before. Um, let me see what you say. Prophet Millie said, uh, sounds like upset supernatural voice. Yes, it does. Um, this, you, you know how we read in the book of Revelation and we see uh, different trumpets that are being blown. We see that there are angels that are uh, introducing the seals. You got the trumpet trumpets and you also have the bowls those of, of wrath um so the world is not going to have an excuse they're not going to have an excuse when the messiah returns it's not going to be any excuse because these things have been all so sounded so that we can hear them with our natural ears but i think it's really interesting and it just points to the fact that we are in the last days, I believe, um, we, we, we're we getting really, really close. Some of the wicked things that I was looking at today, I'm, I'm, I'm begging the Most High to return. I'm begging. I'm begging him because some really uh, deep, wicked things going on. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. I'm not going to play the video, but I'll at least show you the picture. So we've talked about um, King Charles, Prince Charles is now King Charles. We've talked about him in some previous uh, sessions that we've had together. But so I've been keeping my eye on him. But I don't know if, if you all have seen this coronation of King Charles. Uh, which I believe happened this week. Uh, I saw a lot of videos of people showing this figure. Uh, it looks like a grim reaper who just appeared during uh, King Charles coronation. And it spooked the guards because you could see one of the vid one of the guys here. He looked, you know how when you see the British, guards they're usually pretty pretty much just rigid you know they're not moving they're standing but one of them he he, he looked at him as soon as he saw him and there's another shot that they had of the audience when when this creature whatever this thing is started walking it's like the whole audience like just gasped and so these things really shouldn't surprise us for those of us that know the word but there's signs there's things that we're going to see as we're getting deeper and deeper into these last days we're going you know there's when we read about the seals in the book of revelation i'm gonna go there real quick uh, 
I won't be here too long so we can get to our Bible study. But when we read in Revelation chapter 6, this is talking about the six seals. Uh, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the first, the first rider on the white horse is conquering. Then we see the second, the second rider says, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast come and say, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. These are all things that have been happening for a very long time. But as these last, as we're in these last days and we get closer and closer to the coming of the Messiah, these things are just going to continue to escalate. The third seal, famine. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil in the wine. So... This sounds like famine. This sounds like uh, this uh, sounds like inflation. Exactly some of the things that are going on right now all over the world. Then the fourth seal, it says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I, I looked and beheld a pale horse. His name sat on him. De his name was death and hell followed with him power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth i really believe we're getting ready for this i really believe we're getting ready for this fourth seal i don't believe that it has happened yet um i believe we're waiting for a fourth part of the earth to be killed i could be wrong but from what I see, that's that's what I believe. And who knows? When we look at this, maybe this is one of the riders. Who knows? I don't know. But this place um, is so heavily guarded. No one should just be able to walk up in there and, you know, and surprise everyone like what just happened. So really interesting. I encourage you to look at this videos. Um, I, I put it in the chat so all of you that want to look at it, you can look at it. So I'll put it in the chat right now. Okay. So just some of the things going on that I, I want us to be aware of. Oh, one thing I'll, I'll bring up too about King Charles. The reason we were discuss discussing King Charles in some of the previous videos is because his name, uh, when you do the numerology in Hebrew and in Greek as well, when you do um, Prince Charles of Wales, it equates to 666. When you take his name in Hebrew, you know how in Hebrew every letter is also a number. So like the Aleph, which is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph is the first letter, which is kind of like our A, but it's also the number one. So every number, every, every letter has a number associated with it. And with King Charles' name of Wales, Prince Charles of Wales, it equates to 666. So it's just really interesting. I'm not saying he's the Antichrist or anything like that, but is th this is why I keep my eye on him. Because that doesn't seem like a coincidence that his name would equate to 666 in multiple languages. So also, if you were to see when... Th there's a video on YouTube um, of when he became Prince Charles. And... If you can find that video, maybe I'll, if some of you want to see it, maybe I'll send a link out. Uh, there was a very long video. And one of the things that happened when he became Prince Charles, his mother, Queen Elizabeth, uh, recited 
a scripture from the book of Revelation, which which uh, spoke about the dragon, how the dragon was to receive his power. She spoke that over King Charles when he was becoming Prince Charles. And directly above him was a red dragon. So, you know, that's another reason why I'm, I keep my eyes on him. So this, this thing is very interesting. Also, if you pay attention to what's going on with the World Economic Forum, he's in bed with them. He does a lot of, I, I've seen him do uh, speaking for them. Do, And when it comes to a lot of the climate change things he's pushing for, he's pushing for a lot of just wicked things. But uh, anyway, that's that's what I wanted to bring up. Did you, Ty, did you have something you want to say? Go ahead, Ty. No, no, I don't have anything. Keep going. That was my accident. Okay. All right. Well, no more comments. Okay. Hey, AJ, uh, nice to see you. What, let's see. What are you saying? Thanks for King Charles started with with Klaus. Yes, that's right. Charles uh, Klaus is the chairman of the uh, WEF. He started with him. Yep. Okay. All right, we're going to get started now. So, let me. We, I want to ask. I want to answer this question. I want all of us to kind of think about this before I go into the scriptures. Uh, but what happened when the veil was rent? No cheating, but try to get that in your mind. While you guys are trying to think of that, try to remember what happened when the veil was rent. Just going to quickly look at the last things we. We're looking at in our last Bible study. We were discussing the veil, and we were what we were trying to do is see what similarities there are between the firmament and the veil of the temple. So that was our, our major goal. We saw that Genesis 1 6, the firmament divides the waters from the waters. And the veil divides the holy place from the most holy place or the holies of holies. So really interesting. We, we saw the temple of uh, Elohim. It was open. And in the temple that's in heaven, there's an Ark of the Covenant or Ark of the Testament. So the same thing that's on earth is also in heaven. So we looked at the definition of, of the veil. Um, it's, it's a curtain. It's also that which habitually shuts off. Uh, we, we looked at the, the two veils that are in the tabernacle. One has cherubim on it, the one that divides the most holy place from the holy place. And one does not, the one that divides the holy place from the, from the courtyard. Um, we also saw the veil is composed of different colors, blue and purple and scarlet. It's made of fine linen. It has cherubim on it. On it. Uh, we also see that the high priest garment is made of the same colors. When we look at the ephod, it's, it's composed of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. So it's almost like the high priest is matching the veil. Um, we also look at how the high priest he rent his garments but in the book of leviticus 21 uh yeah uh, give me one second i'm gonna reshare my screen so that uh phoebe can see it we see in leviticus chapter 21 that if you rent your garments that disqualifies you from being a priest uh, one second, you all just need to reshare my screen so everyone can see. Okay. Okay, so Caiaphas, 
who was the high priest during the time of Christ, we saw he rent his clothing. And the clothing is specifically made so that it is hard to, to rip. It's, it's woven twice so that you can't accidentally rip it. So we also saw that Christ has become our high priest. He became our high priest after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek. And not only was he the high priest, but he was also the offering. So he offered himself as a lamb. And, and we thank Yah that he offered himself as a lamb because if, if he hadn't have done that, we'd be stuck in our sin. So that, that blood that was poured out for us purges our conscience. So now we can serve the living God. So it does much more than what the blood of bulls and goats could do, which is only for the purifying of the flesh. So that's where we left off. Now, I hope you've had some time to think about this. What happened when the veil was rent? Anybody? Have, anybody remember what happened? Go ahead, Ty. We were given... We were given, oh, we were given free access. Well, we were given access to the most holy of holies. So we could go to Yah. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. We could go to Yah because of his son. That's right. That's right. That's one of the things that happened. Prophet Miller. I don't hear you if you're talking. Okay. In, in, anybody else? Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sure the veil in the Holy of Holies was red. But I felt like the other veil wasn't. Because that would have just gave anyone from the courtyard... I mean, I could be wrong. It just seemed like there still had to be some kind of either acknowledgement of yourself and you got to come to Yahushua, you know, with a clean heart before you can approach the throne. So I feel like the outer veil wasn't rent. But like I said, I could be wrong. Okay. So, so we got something we got something to look at. I saw uh, Prophet Miller. He said that Yahushua gave up the ghosts when the veil was rent, and that is correct. Uh, go ahead, AJ. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this might be off topic. I mean, not off topic, but something maybe someone hasn't really um, thought of before. But the, the Father said that his eternal purpose was hid in jesus christ is that correct mm -hmm. okay yeah. so the eternal plan the eternal purpose um when christ died when that veil opened up what paul received which would be the revelation of paul i believe was the revelation of predestination which hadn't been around if you look at paul's paul's writings a lot of it did entail predestination so the veil being rent or the um uh, yeah that veil being torn allowed us access into the bosom of the father which is the holy place i i believe that because i believe what holier place could there be but the heart of the father so that ripped the veil and allowed us access into the eternal plan which jesus gave to paul which was the predestinated plan for the salvation of his chosen ones. And I'll leave it at that. I see. So that veil being rent allows us to the most intimate place. I like that. This, the, the bosom of the father. That's, that's a good way of putting that. Let's, let's um, look at some scriptures. And let's see what happened. So I want to go first. First, we'll look at this definition again. 
the veil is as we talked about earlier there's two of them there was one in the most holy place and one uh right right by the courtyard go, going into the holy place and so it was dividing it was to to keep out a person it was to keep out pe a people so that the children of israel when they would come to the temple they weren't allowed to go into the most of holy not the most yeah the most holy place and the holy place they weren't allowed to go unless you were a priest so I, that was the first thing a certain role was necessary a certain level of purity holiness was required in order for you to even go inside the holy place you had more requirements upon you if you were a priest and then the veil dividing the holy place from the most holy place of course you had to be the high priest so even more requirements were placed upon you um but we're going to go to matthew 27 45 and I, I, actually let's just read the whole thing we'll come back to this slide but let's read the whole thing Okay. Oops, I got the wrong. I went to the wrong one. Which one is it? Seven. Okay. Okay, verse 45 says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, by the way, the sixth hour is, is uh, 12 o'clock. The ninth hour would be 3 o'clock. So from noon to 3 there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man called for Elias. And straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to, to drink. The rest said, let be let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Yahushua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. This is what uh, Prophet Miller said earlier. He yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. That means into two, from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So now we see... What happened when he gave up the ghosts, it was dark. The veil of the temple was rent into two. From the top to bottom, there was an earthquake and the rocks ripped apart. That's a really heavy earthquake. It says, and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after this resurrection. And let me read that again. It came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So there was also a resurrection that occurred. Now, if you read this in other, in, in, in other uh, books, it actually will say in parentheses, this apt happened after his resurrection. So... Well, it, it kind of says it here, too, after his resurrection. So, so that's that's what I was looking for. What happened when the veil was rent? Now let's go back. There's a few things I want to point out. Verse 45, now the moon until three, there was darkness that came over all the land. So we got darkness. We know the temple was torn. We know there was an earthquake. We know that there was a resurrection. Also, we saw that they, meaning the centurion, they were extremely terrified. 
they they realize oh this is the son of god has to be so luke 23 it says the same thing verse 44 it says and it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst when Yahushua had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Okay. Now, this is interesting because we read this verse earlier uh, during our first talk about the firmament. And we actually, we read this earlier today too, talking about the six we, we read chapter six but this is regarding the sixth seal what i want us to notice is some of the similarities that we see it says and i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake so we got an earthquake the sun became black we saw the sun become black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood we didn't see anything about the moon uh, it says, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Now we see another connection. Last week we were making a connection between the firmament and the veil. Now we see the heaven which can also be the firmament genesis chapter 1 verse 8 he called the firmament heaven this firmament is going to be rolled away like a scroll it says when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places now this earthquake that's going to happen is going to be tremendous we also talked about last week though when when the messiah comes back even the mountains are going to melt at his presence they're going to be terrified they're, it's the sun is even going to is even going to be ashamed it says the kings of the earth the great men the rich men the chief captains the mighty men every bondman every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come so we also see men that are afraid just like the centurion were extremely terrified very interesting i all of this from just looking at the veil being rent and also looking at the firmament one day being removed and as we discussed, that veil being removed means we now have access. We now have access. When the firmament is removed, there's now going to be access that we've never seen before. Because now we're going to physically be able to see what was above, heaven and earth coming together and meeting. We're going to see that the Messiah... When he's but this time he's not coming he's not coming as that humble servant this next time he's coming in the glory of the father that's what the scripture says when he for the second coming yahushua the messiah he comes in the glory of the father that means you better watch out because the the glory of the father i don't think any of us can really fully comprehend that Go ahead, Ty. What I'm seeing is, while you're talking, is now it's like Yah has been coming to meet us. We meet him on the Sabbath and all that other stuff. But at this moment, Yah is going to be revealed. And he said, if you come to me, you have to come to me in a certain way. And everyone on earth won't have the chance to come to him in that way if they're not ready. So just like you would come to him when you're not ready, the things that would happen to you, now when Yeshua, Yahushua is coming, um, 
he's coming. When I see glory of the father, the father's there. And he's coming on the father's behalf. And the glory that Yah is, is going to be not only surrounding him, but through him with, with, with everything else that's going to be happening. And so it's almost like immediate judgment. Because now there's nothing separating us from a holy, righteous Yah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's the whole point. I, when I when I started this Bible study, I did not expect to see all of these different things. But that's probably the number one thing that I'm taking from all of this uh, study that we've done is that we need to be like the priests. Israel is a kingdom of priests. That's what Yah called Israel to be. A kingdom of priests. It, it initially, it wasn't just the Levites that were supposed to be priests, the sons of Aaron. The whole nation was supposed to be a royal priesthood. The entire nation, because of disobedience, because of some things that happened when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, now only the Levites, the sons of Aaron, were allowed to be the Levitical priests. But Yah wants all of us to have a priestly role as a, as a nation. All of Israel should be a priestly nation. And what that means is, even though, even though not everyone is a Levite, not everyone is the son of Aaron, we need to understand the requirements that Yah placed on the priesthood. We need to understand because what it does is it teaches us how holy he is. It teaches us how sanctified and set apart he is. And just as he is set apart, we need to be set apart. We need to be set apart to him. Just like he is not like evil, just like he is not like liars, just like he is not like deceivers and manipulators and, and murderers and thieves. And, and, and just like he is faithful, we should be faithful. He wants his children to be just like him. Go ahead, Caleb. Well, that's why I was saying I don't think that second bill was Rick because you ain't going to just walk up in there, anybody. You know, the the, the Holy of Holy veil was Rick. But that outer veil, I don't think that was Rick because his holiness ain't going to allow it to be Rick for anybody just to walk up in there. So... I, I it, the scripture doesn't I don't know if it says it we would have to go through all the gospels and see if it actually specifically or it might even be in the book of Hebrews we can check and see that but I, I, don't, I don't know to be honest if if the I, I would think both of them um, but I'm not sure like you said I, I don't know we, we can look in we can look at it though I mean if it was Rip before you would even be out in the outer courtyard, something would have to come upon you. Because let's say you was a murderer or you was a thief or whatever, and you're approaching this courtyard, something's going to have to come over you for you to have a whole change of heart, you know, a whole change of mind, you know, a whole change of attitude for you to approach, you know, his throne. Well, well one, thi one thing, though, you have to remember, too, though, is when this happened when when the veil was rent yeshua died eventually he resurrected there was a change that happened the spirit of yah now could be imparted to individuals now so he's not he's no longer dwelling in a temple made by human hands so that's one of the things that happened when this happened in fact well i'm not going to go into it i'm not going to go into that but but yeah i i want to look i, I want to look at we can look at some of these scriptures i'm going to get through some more of the presentation but then maybe towards the end i want to we can look at that uh go ahead aj oh okay uh thank you um i just wanted to maybe caveat on what caleb was saying but in a in a different sense okay um the father being invisible. Now keep in mind that not only is the father invisible to us as humans, okay, as the flesh, but he's invisible to the spirit world. 
That's why he's the only invisible God, right? He's the only one invisible. So, and I do concord with you, when this happens, the firmament will roll back, and it, who we will see is the Son of God. Why would we see him? Because he's also, a, he's a flesh, but a different flesh, right? Yeah. So when that veil, when that firmament rolls back, not only are they going to see the Son of God, but I can only imagine what people are going to think, not only that because they're going to see the Son of God, but they're going to realize that something about this world, something about this realm that they thought in one way is going to completely rock their world. They're, they're not going to know what's happening. But I just, I just wanted to, to throw that out there. No, that's good. I, I agree. It, it, they're going to say, uh, truly, our, truly, we have inherited lies from our fathers. That's what they're going to be saying. Um, I think that's in the book of Jeremiah. Everything that we've been taught is wrong. But let's let's keep going. Okay, so I made this uh, chart so we can look at some of these similarities of some of the things that happen. So on Yahushua's death and resurrection, we see an earthquake in Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one. We see the resurrection. We see the veil rent, the firmament removed. We see the sun darken. Um, and then in the sixth seal, we see a, we see almost all of these things happen. The moon turns into blood, the stars fall, the earthquake, the veil was rent. I'm sorry, the firmament was re removed. Actually, in uh, Revelation 6, 6, the sun was darkened. And this was a day of wrath. When we look at Isaiah 13 and Joel chapter 2, we see the same things that happens on the sixth seal. Uh, Joel 2 and Isaiah 13 are both talking about the day of Yah. The moon turns into blood before the day of Yah. The stars, in the, the stars fall before the day of Yah, and there's an earthquake. So the sun is darkened, and it's also a day of wrath. So during this... Uh, Passover and then after it, after the day of Passover, on the day of first fruits, when Yahushua would have risen from the dead, uh, we see these things happen. Now, in these verses, Revelation chapter 6 and Isaiah 13 and Joel chapter 2, it does not mention the resurrection. But if we go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, let's, let's go there quickly. We'll go towards the bottom here. 1 Thessalonians, oh, I spelled something wrong. Yes. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep meaning those that are are dead that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that yeshua died and rose again even so them also which sleep in yeshua will god bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of yahuwah that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of yahuwah shall not prevent them which are asleep or dead for Yahuwah himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahuwah in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, First Corinthians, first uh, not Corinthians, first Thessalonians chapter four talks about the resurrection and then those that are going to be gathered to him at the coming, at the coming of the Messiah. Then chapter five, which is continuing chapter four, it says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, 
you have no need that I write you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord or the day of Yah so cometh as a thief in the night. So even though we don't see resurrection in these chapters here, there are other other places that I, we could have went and we would also see resurrection when we... Uh, see the day of day of yah happen so if i had if i had the other passages here we could put blue check marks i'm sorry we could put put blue check marks by the resurrection so this is a lot of similarities that i'm seeing we're going to see signs in the heaven in the future just like there was when yahushua died we're going to see earthquakes we're going to see that people are going to be afraid and terrified just like the centurions were afraid and terrified they realized he was the son of god they said surely he is the son of god just like aj just mentioned when he comes and he parts the sky we're going to be like oh surely <laughs> surely he is the son of of Elohim, the son of the most high. Because we're going to see him come in his glory. And we're going to realize, everyone's going to realize, the whole world is going to realize that his word is true. Everyone's going to realize, oh, there is a God. He sits on the throne. And he's, he's, he's about to handle business. Go ahead, uh, AJ. Um, can I just say something real quick? Uh, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I've always thought that um, when the scriptures talk about him coming in as a thief in the night, the thief in the night, what I'm getting as a night would be um, a falling away from the truth, okay? Because they're not children of the light, they're the children of the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, he's coming because... Uh, or the night can represent the strong delusion that the father will send. And what is this strong delusion? It's exactly the topic that you're discussing. I don't think a lot of Christians, and I call them Christians because that's what they call themselves. I don't think a lot of them understand that when they walk outside and they see a, a sun moving and they read the scriptures that tell them that the sun moves, when you ask them if the sun moves, they say it doesn't. This is a strong delusion. Yep. God's going to come in a, as a thief in the night. In the night, what night is he referencing? The night is the strong delusion or the, 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 the truth that's not there, the falling away from the truth. This is when he's coming. When um, the scriptures reference um, that there will be false prophets and false Christs, and if it were possible that even the elect would be deceived, if it were possible. See, the Lord said, if it were possible, because there will be a time just like, and I, I find it a, a, an honor to be able to speak with people who actually believe what I believe when it comes to this. Because as some of you, if you if, if you've encountered, most people think that you're kind of off your rocker. But what they don't realize is, all the times that they speak about the strong delusion in the church, they're the strong delusion. Yep. They're the falling away. They don't realize that God has put, because here's, here's the thing, you can't worship a God in spirit and truth if you don't believe the word that Jesus said was spirit and truth. You can't worship him. You can't worship a God who created this and put in his scriptures how he created it if you don't believe it. So I just wanted to throw that out there as far as a thief um, him coming uh, as a thief in the night. I, I believe this is the night that he's referencing because it's one of the major things that in this era or this age that um, most people don't know about. Yes, amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. The, I really like how you, you brought in the night concept because the children of the night 
are deceived because they're in darkness. Darkness means you can't see, you have no knowledge, you have no information. Specifically, you have no knowledge of God, no knowledge of the truth. You have no revelation. And definitely, this is the time, this is the uh, an age of darkness right now. So that's that's good. I appreciate that uh, comment. Um. So let's keep let's keep going. Um. Now I wanted to I want to discuss something else. I want to look at the marriage covenant. So we're we're shifting a little bit, but we're still on the same topic. Um, there's some connections that we're going to make by looking at the marriage covenant, which happens in Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. So uh, let's look at this. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that Yahuwah have said, will we do and be obedient? So, first we got the Book of the Covenant. This is, I, I want to point this, this point out because the Book of the Covenant is actually not the same thing as the Book of the Law. They're actually two different documents. You'll notice if you look at the um, the chapter in Exodus where it's talking about the Ark of the Covenant and after the law is given, the law is placed on the side of the Ark of, of the Covenant as a witness against you, talking about the children of Israel. So the book of the law or the book of the Torah, which was given after the children of Israel sinned with the golden calf, that was placed on the side of the Ark, Ark of the Covenant. And we can look at that a little bit later. But the book of the, I'm sorry, the book of the law was placed on the side. But the book of the covenant was actually placed inside of the Ark, which are the two tablets of stone. Just want to point that out. So it says it was read in the audience of the people. And they said, all oh, the Lord have said, will we do and be obedient? Now, what this reminds me of are wedding vows. It reminds me of wedding vows because, um, I'm sorry, something wrong with my slides. That's fine. I'll just leave it there. It says that after the Book of the Covenant, you can kind of think of the Book of the Covenant as being a document. And now the vows are like, we're agreeing to the terms that are written in this book this is what the children of israel are saying when they're at mount sinai it says and moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant which yahuwah hath made with you concerning all these words so now we have some blood and we all know when there's a marriage there's some blood involved because when there's a marriage that is a blood covenant so that blood is actually what's consummating the marriage, is what's sealing the marriage. So Yah is sealing it with his blood at this moment. Then verse 9, well, not his blood, but, you know, the blood of the animal, but it's, re it's a representation, you know. Verse 9, it says, Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of the heaven in his clearness. So Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abidu, and the elders, the 70 elders, they saw him. What this reminds me of is the veil being removed off the bride so when the husband sees his wife what does he do before he kisses her he takes off the veil i know that's what i did with my wife took off that veil now i can see her the most high he's doing the same thing they saw him 
But what was under his feet was this sapphire star. That was what was under his feet. That's what they saw. I'm going to get to this body of heaven, what that means, too. But I'm going to skip it for now. It says, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim. So the nobles of the children of Israel, that's ro the royalty, they also saw him. And did eat and drink. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, come up to me in the mount. So Yah was saying to Moses, come up to me where I'm at. And be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou wast, that thou mayest teach them. So we see a, a few different things here that are very interesting. It, it definitely looks like there's a marriage going on. Definitely a covenant that's being made. You see the book of the covenant, covenant that's the hard copy of the co covenant that's being made. You see the wedding vows. You see the consummation, which is the blood. You see the removal of the veil, which this is actually a third type of a veil. I, I forgot to mention that. This is another veil we're seeing. It's a separation between the husband and wife. But this is the, the wedding veil. So many veils in the scripture. Wow. Then after they see... Yahuwah, and they see the sapphire stone, then they see, as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness, and they see him. And then they top it off with a meal. They eat and drink. They got the wedding banquet. That's also how covenants are made. Whenever, when there's a covenant, usually you see in the scriptures, you see a, a meal. You'll see bread. You'll see wine. All throughout the scripture, you'll see this. Bread and wine, just like with Abraham, when the covenant was made, he he, he ate. Um, it also says, um, after this meal, then he gives them, Yah gives him the tables of stone. Uh, okay, somebody put there. Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Prophet Miller says business deals are often made over a meal. That is, that's right. When when I do my business deals, um, I've, I've made a lot of deals with my software development. Whenever I would travel somewhere, we almost always took our clients out to eat. Almost always. So that meal would be the final thing after we have signed the contract we would spend money and we would celebrate have a good time finally we're out the office that's the way you seal it even to, till today even in our western culture uh and then i see ty says since they ate was it a feast day uh, it was a feast day actually when this marriage covenant was made this was uh what was this this shaba oath Pentecost. Pentecost. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take that back. Let me let me think about that for a second. When they were at the mount, yeah, that was Shabbat. Shabbat. So it was a feast day. Uh, did you have something you want to say, uh, Ty, or were you just bringing up the question? Okay. So yeah, this is this is awesome, and and thank you, uh, AJ. Uh, let's, oh, I thought I had a slide for this, but I don't see it. Let's see it now. One second, you all. I want to talk about this body of heaven and his clearness. So it's okay. I, re I remember. I remember. So this word for body, and it says the body of heaven and his clearness, that word body in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word for bone. And it means bone and it means structure. It means the essence of something. So just like a bone is the structure of the body, it holds up the body. That's what this paved work of sapphire stone is. 
it's the body of heaven. Interesting. Because we also know heaven can mean firmament. So whatever he was standing on, the sapphire stone, it was the structure or the bones of heaven. You know, I, I want to show you that. I, I don't want you to just take my word. So let's look at it. Let's go to the scripture. Exodus 24, verse 7. Here it is, verse 10, Exodus 24, verse 10. Okay. The body, okay, the body. This word for body in Hebrew is the word eshem or eshem. And it means, the primary meaning for this is bone. Bone, substance, self. So... So I love the Bible because the scriptures actually interpret the scriptures. So when there's a definition, if you want to know what something is or you want to know more detail, all you really have to do is go to another scripture. So if you want to know what's the firmament made of or what's the structure of heaven, this scripture is actually telling us what, what it's saying is that sapphire stone it, under his feet was sapphire stone and as it were the bones or the structure of heaven in its clearness this, this is interesting let's see AJ says Psalm 19 speaks about the son and the bridegroom let's go there because that's that's the first scripture I want to yeah let's let's read that real quick before we get off the this bridegroom topic. So, so the chief musician, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim and the firmament show of his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. The firmament is talking to us. It's speaking. If you're looking, it's talking to you. It show, it's showing its knowledge. I cannot wait to show you all some of the things that I'm learning about the stars and the movement of the sun. And I can't I can't wait to get into all of that. It says there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. It doesn't matter where you go on planet Earth. The heavens, you're going to be able to understand the language of the heavens. You're going to be able to understand the language. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the wor world. In them that he have, I'm sorry, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So the tabernacle for the sun, that means it's a dwelling place for the sun. That's where it lives. Which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Well, wow, that's awesome. So when the sun is coming out, it's showing us a picture of the bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Wow, that's that's powerful. This this is this is how the sun. I mean, this is how the, this is how the heavens are declaring the glory. <laughs> this is how it's declaring the glory of Yah. Were you saying something, Ty? I said that's really good. Yes, it is. Go ahead, AJ. And thank you. And can I just say and reiterate, because it's, 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 I can't say this enough. If you cannot believe your own eyes when you walk outside and see, the people aren't going to have an excuse. Mm -hmm. When they walk outside and they don't feel the earth moving, how can they tell a God who said throughout the scripture that the earth doesn't move? That it's not moving. You cannot deny. You can't worship the, the Lord in his truth and in his spirit. If he hasn't given you this. And let me give you this one little piece of information. And I'll be quiet. Because this is just exciting to me. 
the spirit gives the uh, the father gives us the spirit or he's supposed to now to give those who he has elected the spirit of adoption if you don't have the spirit of adoption then you're going to go outside and you're going to look at the sun and not think that it moves and you're going to read the scriptures that say that the sun is moving in its circuits and you can't believe it you, and, and and you won't be able to believe it until he removes the blindfolds to show you and offers you the spirit of adoption to see it this is important it's as important as it it, it is what tells you that you are being that you have been given the spirit of adoption and that the the holy spirit god's spirit is dwelling in you if you see this and i think it's special and, I, and i'll be quiet thank you oh that's good and just to have a witness a witness to what he was saying psalm 74 17 thou has set all the borders of the earth thou has made oh i'm, sorry, I'm reading the wrong verse which one is it psalm, yeah psalm 74 17 I'm reading it in the wrong version, that's why. One second. I'm sorry, y'all. Give me one second. I wanna I wanna show you this witness to what he was just referring to. Um, While you're doing that, I'll Go ahead. give my little commentary to pass the time <laughs> and also just to uh, express myself in the meantime. But kind of piggyback off what AJ, Brother AJ was saying. I don't know if it's, if it's God or not. Y'all may need to pray for me because the more Yahuwah reveals the real truth as opposed to what I thought was the truth, and I consider the scripture, they that worship him can, you know, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. You know, and then I, you know, you know, I, I, uh, I read what I call now, I don't say the Bible, I call it the word of God because I include the Apocrypha as scripture. And as I'm getting the revelation, I'm reading the Apocrypha and I'm rereading the, what we call the canon. Um, and I'm, you know, realizing what the real truth is as opposed to what I've been taught all of my saved life in the church. Um, I'm starting to kind of get a, a disdain for Christianity to be really transparent. Like it's, it's I, I find myself almost getting upset <laughs> that all the things I've been told that were either partially or completely in error. So, yeah, that's that's my little y'all pray for me if, if I need it. Yep, that's that's good. I, I understand exactly what you mean, but I, f I found the scripture. I was just looking at the wrong uh, version. It says you have fixed all the boundaries of the earth. The boundaries of the earth are fixed. There's one more. That's not even the passage. There's another passage that talks about the earth being fixed and immovable. It doesn't move. Um, I, I don't have it prepared, but I wanted to have at least one. Uh, one witness to go along with what he was saying but if any of you know that verse bring it up to me and i'll show it uh, but let's keep let's keep going good uh discussion all right so we look we've been looking at this marriage covenant and now i want to ask another question what type of stone was the ten words or commandments made of? See, typically when you think about the ten commandments, what comes to your mind? Anybody have any ideas? And no, Ty and Prophet Miller, you cannot answer this. No, you want to. I was just typing in the chat. No, too. you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not allowed. I'm just playing. Yeah. I was <laughs> going to answer. I already know. Granted. Oh, hold on, Romy. What'd you say, Romy? Granite. Granite. Okay. Somebody thinks it's granite. Sapphire. Sapphire. Okay. That's a good one. Anybody else?
Yep. Okay, we got granite and we got sapphire. Let's let's look at this. I'm going to um, we're going to reread what we just read, but we're only going to focus on a few different verses here. So nine. Verse 9, it says, Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of, of Israel. And they saw Elohim of Israel, and, under, and there was under his feet, as it were, a pavework of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven, or the bones of heaven, the structure of heaven in its clearness. So what I want you to notice is that they see the Most High, they see under his feet sapphire stone. This is the only stone we see so far. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone. So what I want you to notice here. Is now Moses has got to go up. He's got to go to Yah. He's got to meet the Most High. So when the Most High comes on the mountain, it's in in essence, it's basically heaven coming to earth, because wherever Yah is, wherever His presence here is, that's that's heaven on earth. It's just like the Garden of Eden. Whenever He's in a, spe a specific spot here on earth, wherever that is. That's where that's that's where his uh, presence is, and it's like heaven. Come up to me into the mountain there. I will give thee the tables of stone. So it does not say, not, not in this verse, it does not say, not in this occasion, maybe in the second occasion, I haven't looked at that yet. But the first time Moses received the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say that Moses went and got some stone. Yah is saying, I will give thee tables of stone. So not only did he write it with his own finger, he also provided the, the tables of stone, the stone tablets. So just bear with me for a second. When we go into the Garden of Eden, I think you'll see this much more clearly. But just imagine with me for a moment. Yah is coming on to the mountain. The Father is coming at the top of the mountain. He calls up to Moses. He says, come up here. So he's sitting on the mountain now. His throne is on the mountain. Wherever he's sitting, that's where his throne is, on earth, wherever he's sitting. Mount Sinai is one of the holy mountains. According to the book of Jubilees, there's three holy mountains on earth. Mount Zion, Mount Sinai, and the Mount uh, of the East, I believe. There's three holy mountains. This is Mount Sinai that they're on. And you know it's holy. It has to be holy. By default, we talked about holiness. By default, it has to be holy. Why? Because... Yah is there. Wherever he is at, it has to be a holy place. As we were studying the temple, the temple had to be purified. There had to be blood sprinkled on Yom Kippur. There had to be all of these washings that would have to happen for the priests. And everything had to be sanctified within the temple to make it a holy place. It had to be purified because the sins of the people would defile the temple. Even if they weren't at the temple, still the sins of the people would defile defile the temple. So that's why there was always a necess it was always necessary to continue to consecrate and rededicate and purify. So Mount Sinai is a holy place because Yah is there. This is why the children of Israel could only come, they couldn't come uh, up onto the mountain. Remember, uh, Yah told Moses, tell the children of Israel not to come. Don't you come up on this mountain. 
He says, lest I break forth. I love the way it says in King James. He says, I'm going to, lest I break forth upon them. <laughs> he's going to break forth upon them. That means he's, they're, they're going to, they're going to have a plague. They, they, fire is going to happen something's going to happen that's bad and terrible if they come up on this mountain because this is a holy mountain i've sanctified you moses i haven't sanctified all of the children of israel they rebellious and everything anyway they making golden calves and everything so i don't want them up here otherwise i'm gonna break forth on them so this this mount is holy and the most holy one is on the mount and that's why they see this sapphire star Remember his throne we read in Ezekiel chapter 1. We read in Ezekiel chapter 1 how the throne is made of sapphire as well. When Ezekiel's looking up into the heavens, he's looking up in the firmament, he sees the sapphire stone. So now this stone that they that uh, is under his feet, under Yah's feet, which is as the body of heaven or the bones of the firmament, the structure of the firmament, now, Yah is saying, come up to me. I'm going to give you these tables of stone. Where do they see him? He's at he's he's up on the mount. And that's this is where they see him. And the only stone, if we read this in this context, this stone is sapphire stone. Don't just take my word. We're going to look at a witness. We're going to look at a witness. So under Yah's feet, we see paved the sapphire stone. It's the body, the essence, the structure of heaven. Moses went to Yah on the mount, and Yah gave to Moses the tables of stone where Yah was. Moses didn't just get these from wherever. No, Yah gave this to him. I hope y'all seeing this. He is the one that provided. Um, I think I'm going to come back to this, these passages. Now, I'm not going to read all this, but I just want to remind you. The veil was made of blue, purple, and scarlet. And there was cherubims. The high priest garment made of blue, purple, and scarlet. We're, we're going to answer this question about these, this blue. But in order to do this, we got to look at some of the other passages. So Revelation 17, 4 through 5, we see the mother of harlots it says in verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. So now we see that there's a woman. This woman is an adulteress. She's a harlot. And the nations have be, become drunk off, off all of her abominations. But she's also arrayed, just like the high priest was arrayed. Look at some of these colors, purple, scarlet. We see the gold again, decked with gold and precious stones. So the high priest... He was, his ephod was made of gold. What, what, what that means is the gold is what you would place the gemstones in. The precious stones that the high priest wore, they would be placed in gold. But then the ephod also had uh, linen. It was made of fine linen in between the stones. And those stones are blue, purple, and scarlet. But look at these colors. You see, what color is missing from the mother of harlots? Let's go back to it. Somebody tell me, what color is missing? Blue. Sap that's, yep. Sapphire. That's right. You're right. The blue, the sapphire color, which is blue, is missing. So this woman, she's like a priestess. Remember, we looked at the church. Uh, let me show you that again, just so I don't. Some of you may not have been there for this. But we looked at the origin of the word church.
and that the word church comes from the word uh, it's pronounced a few different ways let's see how wikipedia pronounces it kirke kirke this let, I'm, let's go to the etymology again i, I want y'all to see it for yourself for those who have never seen this before etymology church okay church it's an old english surrix i don't know how you pronounce that surrix or kirk kirk say it's the same thing i don't know how you pronounce it uh you see proto-germanic kirika old saxon kirika old norse kirika kirk in dutch and german same thing kirk they just spell it with a k instead of a c this is where our our word church comes from and this is the goddess kirk and let's see what the goddess of the kirk or the church let's see let's read about it for a second kirk pronounce uh, pronounced Kirke is an enchantress you know enchantress is someone that uh makes spells magics rituals and a minor a minor goddess in ancient greek mythology and religion she is the daughter of the sun god of course she is helios in the ocean nid nymph percy uh Kirke was renowned for her vast knowledge about potions and herbs through the use of these and magic a magic wand or staff she would transform form her enemies or those who offended her into animals so she's transforming people through magic into animals one of the biggest things about animals that distinguishes us humans from animals is our ability uh to to reason we're, we're at a higher level than they are so if we're animals we just you know a dog is a dog a cat is a cat a horse is a horse she's turning them into animals which is what we see now all throughout the world people are basically acting like animals also in the church by the way what i want you to notice though let's look at this picture let's look, make it a little bit bigger in this picture of this goddess look she's got a golden cup in her hands golden cup she's wearing red and gold she has a golden throne it's very interesting when i read this and we read revelation just it's, it's, it's interesting that's all i'm saying it's interesting that this woman now as someone pointed in the comments the catholic uh priests they also deck themselves with purple and scarlet if you look at the bishop robes they're they're wearing this as well but let's keep going we see we're missing blue yes the heliocentric model is sun worship yes it is it's 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 all about the sun um everything revolves around the sun um so it's not it's it, it would make sense that kirke or church cersei would be cersei is it cersei Cer okay yeah thank thank you <laughs> yeah, cool. i need help when it comes to these words yes, it's, it's cool it's cool so as you as you as you noted the blue is missing the high priest he has all of these colors the scarlet the purple the blue and the gold temple veil has the scarlet the purple the blue and the gold but the harlot who rides the beast has scarlet purple and gold but is missing the blue so what does the blue represent well the blue actually let's look I, I forgot about this let's look at the scarlet scarlet means 
blood, redemption, cleansing. If you all think of something I didn't put on here, you're welcome to put on, put uh, put it in the chat or let me know. Purple means royalty, kingdom. Gold is a representation of wealth, right? But blue, what does blue mean? Before I go to the next slide, anybody got an idea? Transparency, yeah. So we. That, that, I thought it was grace. Grace. Purity. Yeah. White is purity. Okay. So, I, I'm I'm sure if we if we do a word search on blue, and the different types of blue that are mentioned in the scriptures, we'll we'll see multiple meanings, representations. Just like for scarlet, it represents blood but it also re represents redemption, but they're connected because we're redeemed by the blood. And we're redeemed because the blood cleanses us from sin. So I'm sure we'll see, all, we can make all kinds of connections if we look up blue, but none of you said any what I was looking for yet. Anybody else? The sky? Yeah, that, that would be the obvious one, the sky, yeah sky or the firmament is when we look up there is blue Ooh, and the ocean and the ocean. <laughs> ocean looks blue which means the water water is definitely you know heaven is shamayim and water is mayim so they're both blue so maybe there's That's something to that they're, they're, I, I think you're right Let's see okay aj said the holy spirit represents the body. truth 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 and then mm -hmm. the men mm -hmm. they're wrong so that's not that's that's not a, a representation <laughs> it, it's a blue robe but what does that mean what is this all right let's keep going let's look we're going to figure this out by looking at the ct number 1538 speak unto the children of israel and bid them that they make fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they may put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe or titi that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of yahuwah and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring look at this the tzitzit, which were supposed to be blue, are to remind us to keep the commandments of Yahuwah, Yahuwah's word. And what were the commandments written on? The commandments were written on two tablets of stone. And what was that stone? Blue, sapphire. So let's look at some titi for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, um, most of y'all, I do believe on the call know what titi are, but for you that don't, this this is an example of titi. This and this sometimes you see uh, tats tassels. Sometimes you see fringes. This is what would be worn by the Israelites. And you see the blue is blue and white, but you see the blue because it's supposed to remind you to keep the commandments. And of course, it would be blue because the tablets of stone were blue. Go ahead, Rose. I just have to share. This is so crazy because, you know, I could have graduated high school from a red, blue, and white school, but this is amazing. This to me, I'm sorry, this is like a quick testimony, but my tassel that I actually ended up grad because I went back to school, school I graduated through um, Seattle co College, but there, the tassel was blue and white. Mm -hmm. So I just had to point that out, how awesome that was for me because he said the Israelite. So I was like, yo, uh, yes, <laughs> that's yes. amazing. Yep. And it would look just like that thing that you just showed me. Yes. 
exactly. Awesome. That, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and, so, and, and for the, most of us know about the scripture of the woman with the issue of blood, right? The woman who had the issue of blood, she um, has had this issue for 12 years. It was 12 years. You, you can see the connection to the 12 tribes of Israel and how the 12 tribes of Israel have have their issues they need to be washed and they need to be cleansed but anyways this this woman she what what she does is she finds Yahusha in the crowd she's she's heard that he is is in town and she's been having this issue of blood she's going to all the doctors they haven't been able to help her and because she's been bleeding she's unclean you know when a woman is uh uh, on her period, for that time period, according to the law, she would be considered unclean. And then even after the period, she's to be unclean for seven days. And then she's also supposed to do a mikvah. A, a, that, that's like a baptism. And then once you have done that, then you're no longer unclean. Unclean doesn't mean you're in sin. It just simply means that you can't go to the temple. Why? Because the temple is a holy place. And so if there's anything that makes you unclean, you can't go and be around the most high. So this blue, this is, this is so awesome when I saw this. And I thank Prophet Miller for this because Prophet Miller, he, he sent this uh, a passage and it just led me on a wild chase all throughout the scripture. I said, oh my goodness. The very thing that is supposed to remind us to keep the commandments is the same color as the Ten Commandments th themselves. Now, I'm not dogmatic about this, but it seems really obvious when you look at the scripture in its, in its context, especially when you look at the Hebrew grammar. Um, let's keep going. Actually, what time is it? I'm, let me see what time is it. It is 10.08. So, might have just a little bit more time. Actually, let me stop. Is there any questions or comments first? Any questions or comments? What do y'all think about this? This, 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 this is amazing. amazing. I love it. I love it. That's right on point. Everything come together yeah that that's 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 what i've been thinking it's all coming together he's it's all coming together yes it's like you're building a lego house or something and just everything just starts to fit together yes yes oh I'm, i don't even want to have my Friday services anymore i just want to sit back and let and just let you teach <laughs> by the way um Thank you to all the people that are on YouTube. We're, we're live streaming, and I have not even been checking because it's my first time live streaming on YouTube. I see all the comments. Wow. I, I will make sure next time I got my other screen up so we I can look at this. But yes, yes, it's like a Lego house. That's right. So let, let's let's go through one. Let's look at one more uh, passage here, and then I think I'll end. I think this is a good spot to end. Um, I still got a quite a few more slides, but one more thing I want to look at. Since we're looking at these connections between the firmament and the veil and all that, one more thing we want to look at is the resurrection. So we talked about the resurrection earlier, but let's look at Daniel 12, 1 through 3. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I wanted to include this verse because now we're seeing a connection between us and the firmament. We have the opportunity to shine like the brightness of the firmament and like the stars. And there's going to be many people that do that. Many people that are dead. They're going to be awakened and some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. They're going to be ashamed and they're going to be miserable because they wasted their life. They did not choose to serve the most high. They chose not to obey. They chose to be lazy. They chose not to, uh, they chose to do, to, to uh, participate in all the cares of this world. They chose to walk in darkness believe the lie, believe the strong delusion. And because of that, some is going to be to shame and everlasting contempt. But to those that are awakened to everlasting life, we're going to be shining. We're going to be shining brightly. We're going to have a light. Just as Yeshua, the Messiah, he is the light of the world. And he also calls, call, uh, he also, um, wants us to be the light to the nations, we're going to be a bright shining light, shining like the stars forever and ever and ever. When people look at us, they are going to see the glory of Yah on us because we're going to be getting new bodies as well. These new bodies aren't going to be like the bodies we have now. These, these uh, mortal bodies, terrestrial bodies, we're going to have celestial bodies. Uh, with a different type of flesh, a heavenly flesh, is what Corinthians says. And we need all of that. Why? Why do we need this new body? Why do we need all that? Because the firmament is open, or at this time, the firmament will be open. And so now there's no more separation. There's no more veil. Just like there's no more veil in the temple, and we, we can be seated in heavenly places right now, physically our body we're going to be able to be in the presence of the most high and we will be we're going to be on mount zion we are going to be worshiping him every sabbath we are going to be keeping the feast days we are going to be doing all of these things we're going to be in his presence we're going to be in his face his panim face to face i can't wait to that day and as we are uh, face to face with the most high we're going to be bright, just like our Father, just like our Heavenly Father, who is the light, just like the Son, who is the light. It's all what's going to happen on this resurrection. Now, the last thing I want to say, I don't think we'll have time to go into it, but I put out a homework question last week. And that homework question was, can anyone think of a third veil? We, we, we talked about the firmament, talked about the temple veil, and we also talked about another veil, the, the wedding veil, which I completely was, wasn't even thinking about. But so actually it's a fourth, but let's see. Anybody, what, what is a, another veil? Okay, I see someone put a comment. I don't see it yet. Go ahead, Ty. Okay, when I was talking to you, oh, I don't know if you can, my bad, I had to turn it up. When I was talking to you last week, or earlier this week. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm um, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Ty. When you, you asked the question. Ty, Ty hold, on, hold uh, on. The scripture came immediately to my, my Ty, mind. can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, I <laughs> have it, but I have I to, I want to find it real quick. But Ty, Ty. It's. I want to me? read the scripture, but it's talking Sorry. about the veil okay. that's on our me. heart. <laughs> Just let him go. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, Second Corinthians uh, three fifteen, I believe. It says, "But even unto this day, when Moshe is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to El Yahuwah." The veil shall be taken away. 
now Yahuwah is that Ruach, and where the Ruach Yahuwah is, there is liberty. Okay. What what passage is that again? That is Second Corinthians uh, three, ver chapter three, verse fifteen. Okay, three thirteen. 15. All right. I was I was telling you, could you hold on for a second, Ty? You weren't hearing me. <laughs> you just kept talking. Because I, I see some uh, comments on YouTube. I wanted to read those, but that's okay. I'll go back to it. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. Or their hearts, I think is what you read. For to this day, when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. That's right. So Moses, when he would go into the holies of holies in the tabernacle, when he would spend time in there, his face, when he would come out, would be shining brightly like light. And when he would come out, the people would even be afraid. So he had to start veiling his face because his face was so bright, because he had just been in the presence of the Most High. So, yes, it, it, it goes along with the shining. It goes along with the shine. I'm going to, I see it. someone put a, a scripture in here, Matthew 13, 43. Let's look at that. Uh, Debbie, let's, let's look at that. What does that say? It says, then the righteous shall sh shall." I'm sorry. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. That's uh, exactly what we've been talking about. Righteous are going to shine just like the sun in the kingdom. And then he says, he who has ears, let him hear. Whenever you see that, that means pay attention. Take heed to what he's saying. We want to be one of these righteous and by the way we are righteous the way we're going to shine like the sun is not necessarily just by our is not just by our deeds we need the righteousness of christ the righteousness of yahushua because if you do good things and if you obey the law, if you keep all the commandments perfectly, but you still don't have the blood of Yeshua, the blood of the Messiah to wash you and cover you, then you're not really righteous because our righteousness is as filthy rags. So these righteous that are going to shine like the sun in the kingdom first off they are in the messiah they believe in him they follow him they trust him and because they follow him and they are holy by default they do good works they obey they keep the commandments we're holy because he declared us holy but it's only through messiah that we're going to be able to shine like this it's only through him Let's uh, let's go back. Any any um. I see Prophet Miller. You you were saying something. Let's. Well, I was. It's on a little board, a little bit more of a mundane level, but uh -huh. you know, you're asking what other veils are there, and since we, are, Scripture does liken, our relationship with Yahuwah, to marriage. On a physical level, there is also the woman's hymen. Yes. Yes. That's Which right. is actually also the same word where we get the word him, H-Y-M-N. Mm -hmm. That's 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 going deep. Yes, it is. That's um, one more aspect. Go ahead, uh, Lisa. Well, I mean, I've been listening the whole time, right? And what the last thing statement that you just said about us, basically, for me, a Christian is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ye holy, for I am holy. 
everything that you said your la- in your last statements is what, to me, a true Christian is. I participate in this community because you expound upon the word of God and it offers um, more revelation. But the last part, I wholly agree, I totally agree with what you say. And that's how I, that is how I see myself as a Christian. I just, I'm just, I just needed to expound upon that. Okay. Um, because that's how, that's how I see myself. Okay. I agree. Being in, in Yahusha is the most important. I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Caleb, then AJ. I was going to say when I first, uh, received this, the Ruach HaKadosh, one of the, uh, verses that was big to me was seek ye first. Yes. The kingdom of heaven. That always stuck with me. And I think that kind of brought me on the path I am now versus a lot of outward other acts that, you know, people in the church do. But if you would have kept on reading on that last verse, that last scripture, or right here, right there, the next scripture said, well, it's not this one. It was the last one we were just looking at. But the next scripture said, when when the, uh, the the kingdom of heaven was was being sought, and the person found it, it was it was uncovered. I wish you could go back to where you just was, but it was the very next. I'm right there. Verse. I'm right there. Verse yeah. 24. Is the treasure hidden in the field which a man hath found covered up? Mm-hmm. So that to me is a veil. You know, that's being uncovered. Yeah. You know, that's being being taken away. Yeah, because I don't think a lot of people seek the kingdom of heaven first, you know, yeah. they, but that's that's really key. And when you when you, you know, go into that, a lot of things become revealed to you. Yes, I, I completely agree. The kingdom of heaven. Let, let me read it. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I like the next one, too. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. That's what we're finding right now. This is this is what's so wonderful, because the most high is revealing to us how his kingdom operates. And then and then I put in the chat also uh, deception, because I feel like all a lot that we so much we've been taught. That's why I saw one of my prayer requests earlier. It all this deception has kept us so far back, and now we just like coming out the ground, you know, out of a hole, you know what I'm saying? Yep, because yep. we just been surrounded by nothing but lies, yes, I agree. on purpose. That's the thing. So now this veil is being uncovered, just as the scripture said it would be in the last days, all this knowledge is going to and fro. And the veil of the parents going to the child is being released. You know, the hearts of the, of the, of the you know, we know what I mean. The, the hearts of the children, yep. or the hearts of the parents being turned to the ch- children, that's a veil being unleashed. You know, so it's a lot of veils being unleashed right now. Amen. That's that's right. I completely agree. It's. I, I'm glad you brought that scripture up because I believe that's the way many of us on this call were so excited because we're finding the kingdom, not just religion. Right. We've been in religion, um, and that's why religion has no power. Religion, uh, people are tired of religion. Everybody's retired of religion. Even the church folks are tired of religion. And and uh, Yeshua, he never came to bring religion. This is why on this on this verse we're looking at on this chapter all of these parables that you read they're all about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of heaven is like and again the kingdom of heaven is like he i don't know, I don't know if you the, remember that pastor that was from uh yep, jamaica that Rose. died that yeah that died and he, he was big on this all right yes he was he didn't want to he didn't want to open my eyes to this that's that was that's my right. dude he was mine too i i actually received the holy spirit in one of his services mm. so this 
this kingdom of heaven if, if you look at the gospels and you see notice when yeshua is talking to the crowds not when he's talking individually privately to his disciples but when he's talking to the crowds he's always preaching the same message he's talking about the kingdom the kingdom is a type of government if you if you think about all of the different challenges that israel has faced the prophets has faced whether it's the old testament or the new testament they were always coming up against governments authorities and kings and armies and so the messiah he said i'm coming i'm bringing a new government a new way of doing things everyone looks at america as being such a great nation uh for whatever reason it's it's a it's a such a great nation because democracy and all of that but actually compared to the kingdom it's trash it's trash because only his kingdom are the laws perfect only in in his kingdom is they a perfect and righteous king and judge it's him in fact the first thing that yeshua said when he started his ministry matthew chapter 4 you know after he was tempted uh by by satan the first thing he says it says is um verse 4 verse 17 after he was tempted he says from that time jesus began to preach saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand this is this was his whole message it's the first thing he taught even john the baptist who baptized yeshua what did he when he was baptizing what was he saying he was saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand he's saying the king is here he's ready to set up his kingdom which of course he wasn't able to do because they rejected him the jews rejected him therefore he he had to delay but so because it's it's late um i'm not going to get but what i'm not going to get into uh the next thing i'm just going to read one last scripture and we'll be done um hebrews chapter 10 this is going to answer the question about the next one of the veils we've talked about different veils there's more than this but this is the next one we're going to talk about hebrews 10 20 it says by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh we look at this in the kjv um pretty much says the same thing by a new and living way which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh next week we're going to be talking about this fleshly veil and i'm sure all of you are probably making all different types of connections right now in your mind uh, i'm sorry I, I didn't realize i see aj you have your hands up and then we'll go to ty well um I, i'm gonna be quick i'm just gonna try to kind of wrap up what what you said about the brightness of the firmament and i can't recall what, what what scripture that was but when you were putting together the firmament and the color blue i thought that was fascinating you. um when you linked it with the firmament equaling the the commandments i thought that was fascinating um now if we look at the commandments i thought then well what is the equivalent of the commandments that would be the son of god right his body yes well watch this when Moses went up to Mount Sinai three different times. Okay. The, w one of the times he took, um, one of the times he went, when he came down, he brought down the, um, the 10 commandments that God had given him. Correct. And then the second time he went up, he went up with uh, commandments. Uh, he went up with stone that the father asked him to carve out of the, uh, out of the mountain and take up with him. Now, Moses receiving those commandments, when he came back down with the commandments in his hand, you referenced him wearing a veil. Yes. 
he now this is just what the Holy Spirit gave me. Um, when he was when he came down and his face was bright, and you were referencing how we were going to be like the sun, bright. Okay, we we're going to be bright. The scriptures say that he was he's the express image of his person and the brightness of his glory. Whose glory? The Father. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the scriptures also say that we will be like him. So that that would reference us being the children of light. Moses coming down in a in a in a in a face where he was so bright. Now this is <laughs> this is going to be a little bit off. I don't. And you, Joel, you you might have have seen this, but when people look at Moses meeting Jesus on the Mount on Mount Transfiguration, people always try to figure out um, whether or not. Uh, well, they say that Elijah. Well, some people say Elijah and Moses are going to be the two um, the two witnesses. But I said that. Um, that the Lord said that um, it is appointed for a man to die once and then judgment. So Moses would have to have risen from the dead and contradict the Bible. So I said, well, what would make more sense? Well, when M Moses and Jesus and Elijah w were there, who else was there? And you spoke about this. You spoke that the father um, spoke from heaven and, and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, hear ye him. So what are we supposed to hear? We're supposed to hear about him and his, his word. But what happened? Jesus was transfigured, right? And the scriptures talk about how there's a, a bright cloud. Well, wouldn't it make more sense, instead of contradicting the Bible and saying that Moses rose from, from the dead, why wouldn't Moses have traveled into the future, saw Jesus, who represents the commandments, God said, hear ye him, what his word. Moses received those commandments, okay? Came back down, and again, this is kind of wild, but when he came down, the face he had that was bright was because of the Father and his brightness, and that made Jesus bright as well. And Moses came down after he had experienced the Father and his brightness. He came down with bright face. Now, that... It's kind of out there, but I don't think my father, who's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and sovereign, I don't think it would be anything short for him to be able to bring Moses to Jesus, who he called his friend, and give him the commandments. Anyway, I'll be quiet. Wow. That, yeah, that's that's profound. I'm going to meditate on that because that, that was a deep... <laughs> that was... That, I didn't I never made the connection too about the brightness of his face, Yeshua's, and then Moses as well. Yeah, that this is exactly the same thing. That's that's pretty good. Uh Ty, I saw your hand up too. Okay. Um I wasn't gonna go that deep. That's what's up. I just wanna say that you were reading the scripture on the kingdom of Yah and this is just a comment since we're done that all of our all of us on this call and and i'm sure the people um that are watching from youtube our heart's desire is that we love yah and we love his work and we want to please our father and and we know that we can live by faith because we're living by faith according to scripture and so you said you talked about the kingdom of yah one of your scriptures and you were going talking with Caleb but it, it it I saw it for the first time it says the kingdom of Yah is like this he found something that meant everything to him so he sold everything he had to buy that and so what I'm seeing is nothing else mattered anymore so he let he he didn't give it away he sold it so that he could get this thing but in essence everything that he owned everything that he thought was impor important everything that he valued he got rid of it or he dis he separated himself from that so yes that's good that's good thank you uh for that well i um i appreciate all the comments and everything and uh 
we will uh, end with prayer. But before we pray, though, I'll just say, if you have time, look at Hebrews chapter 10 and study Hebrews chapter 10. And next week, we're going to talk about Hebrews chapter 10. And if you find any scriptures that are related to this scripture, verse 20, about the flesh being the veil, you know, come come with whatever uh, revelation you have received or whatever you've learned or whatever scripture you have. And we're going to talk about this. I think this is the most exciting one to me out of all the things we've just studied. I can't wait to talk about this. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. You are so good. We honor you. We magnify you. Thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your uh, presence being with us. I can sense you being with us. You promised you would be. And so we thank you, Father, for uh, being faithful to your word. Since more, there's more than two or three of us gathered together in your name. So I thank you for being here in our midst. I ask that you bless everyone. Um, bless the remainder of our week. I pray, Father, that we um, do what's pleasing to you. I pray for increased faith and boldness to be the light that you've called us to be. I pray, Father, that uh, for our families, I pray that you bring salvation, bring healing, bring deliverance for those that need that. I pray for those that need, have financial situations. I pray that you meet their needs. And we love you and we thank you. We bless you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Well, good night. Hey, love y'all. Shalom. And thank you, everyone, on YouTube as well. Shalom. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Jojo. Good night, Good night bro. Hey, Joe, how can people sew into you if they want to? Uncle Romy. I'll, um, let me, my, you see, my cash app is O2RS 1361. But, uh, I'll um, make that known. I'll put it in YouTube for you. Okay, appreciate it. All right, good night, everyone. Love y'all. And thank you, AJ, for coming as well. Nice to have you. Love the comments.